Hi, I'm Charles Sturgis. And I'm Will Ploughs, and welcome to episode two of the Drive By Podcast. Episode two, we're back for more. What have we got coming up in the show today? Well, this week we've got the new Defender that you've been driving, mm, some motoring news. We've got a new US supercar. Oh, yep, yeah, we've got a new US muscle car too. And we've got the new Tesla factory in Zumerset. Ooh, so ah. Let's get straight into it. Yes. New Defender. Well, last week I mentioned on the podcast that I was very excited for the new Defender to come out and I couldn't wait to get behind the wheel of it and have a go. And then you, me, have driven it to its home stomping ground. West London. How was it? Lovely. Nice. I drove it 100 miles there, 100 miles back, and messed around in sort of Notting Hill and then went west. Well, it's all West London, really, Mm. to be perfectly honest. Um, taking it to its true home stomping ground didn't look out of place looked imagine. very very good um, love the drive yeah love the drive I really like that car um, smitten really I really like it yeah I, I like it it's um, it's big you achieve the same presence that you're doing any, when you're driving it you could be driving any other Land Rover product when you're driving it is it like the Discovery Sport to drive uh, I would more have put it in the vein of a Discovery 4, the last generation oh, Discovery. Yeah, yeah. That's what I felt when I was driving it. But to drive it on the motorway down to London, if I'd have done that in the old car, I'd have been sweating, I'd have, my back would have ached, I would have got completely bored with it, my ears would have been bleeding from all the rattling. You'd have tinnitus by now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And But that wafted down the motorway, yeah. very little road noise. Little engine noise, it had 240 horsepower, it had a 240D engine in it, um, and it just wafted along very nicely, very comfortable. I could, it was as comfortable as lying in the bath. It was lovely. Really? I really did enjoy that car. Yet to try it off road. I'm going to be having a little play in that soon. I'm sure it won't let you down, though. Oh, no, absolutely not. But uh, yeah, I'll make sure I come back to you when I've driven it a bit in its proper, proper true state where it should be. And it had a, I'd love to have a go, I'd love to see it. With some proper angry tyres on it, it had road tyres yeah. on it, but with a bit of sort of the knobbly tyres. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe with a little with white lettering as well. I like white lettering mm. because I'm a bit of a yobbo when it comes to that. But I like it. Yeah, I like a yellow letter on the side of a tyre. Yeah. yeah. So what have we got on the show today? What have we got this morning? So yeah, what's this new US supercar that it's we've got? The SSC to. Stutter the SSC Tutara. Uh, he is having a bit of a stutter, isn't it? Don't I'd love your set. You know what I would love? I would love someone from Yorkshire to say it. The SSC Tutara. Yeah. No, no, it'd be Udara. Udara. Yeah, so Tara. No, no, we Dara. Dara. Yeah, so SSC. The people that brought us the ultimate Aero. I think I'm right in saying. Mm. That, um, that was quite an old car. That was quite a while ago, wasn't it? Ten years ago. Pre 2010, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah, the one must that have been about. Was then. to take on the uh, Bugatti Veyron. Yeah. Over 250 miles an hour, jobby. Well, this one, they're saying, is going to go well over 300 miles an hour. Three, oh God, it's got 100 and, sorry, 100. It's got 1,750 horsepower. It does look good, actually. Yeah. Will it really go over 300 miles an hour? Will it go over 300 miles an hour? <laughs> on a good day, probably, and a long enough road. With the tailwind. But you're not going to be able to dump that on a salt flat or anything like that, I don't think. No. And, and take it up to that sort of speed. No, absolutely not. There's only 100 being made. Um, really? Yeah, and the first one that's been made, guess what the guy who's bought it's called? I have no idea what. Larry. His name's Larry. Larry. Oh, good for Larry. Anything interesting about Larry? I thought it had been like Bud or Chuck. No. Or um, Hank. But no, I, I like the back of that. Have you seen the back? It's very Batman esque. It is. It <laughs> reminds me of the old Batmobile BMW. Yes. That's what it yes. looks like. The ones with the, I mean, the Batmobile, I forget the name of it. Um, but that looks very, very good. Yeah. The one I'm looking at is black with a red stripe down the side of it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It looks good. It looks Enzo-y. Yeah, but the only thing they're saying as well is to get the most out of it, you need to have the right fuel. What, you get jet fuel? No, Car- is it pure octane? kerosene? Octane. What sort of... Oh, well, I know every so, fuel has an octane level, but well, I'm not I'm not sure. that So regular 91 octane only delivers 1,350 brake horsepower. So uh, if you've missed your morning espresso, stick to that. Oh, right. Okay, fair enough. But that's what it will... Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dead chuffed with that car. I like that. I like that very much. Um, and what's this new US... Let's get the US stuff out of the way first. This American muscle car that you've been telling me about. Well, I, was I don't know how to pronounce this one either. This one is called the 
You know, Equus. Equus. It's E Q W S. Not W. E Q W S. Equus. Equus. Also noted. That's American. So that's E W, as in not W. Anyway, anyway. But U U. Anyway. Okay, whatever. Equus Automotive, you know the one that came in kind of 2014, made the bass. Doesn't Equus mean horse? It sounds very equestrian, doesn't it? <laughs> it does a bit. Anyway, I, think okay, we, sorry, I, think I think we're getting too muddled up with the name. Okay, carry What on. they basically are, there is this American manufacturer who mm-hmm. kind of builds, like the Project Van Idea mm-hmm. for off-road, they did the muscle car version. So it's kind of the best of the best, all into one car. Oh, right, okay. So in 2014, they brought out the bass, or the bass, 770. Which kind of is like a Mustang Dodge Challenger sort of thing. Right. All put into one. Oh, it does look like a... Oh, yeah. Because look at the front of it. That's also that's like a fastback Mustang. Challenger. With a bit of Challenger in it. Hmm, I like the look of yeah. that. And so now what's they're the, bringing what's this other out one? the throwback. Which is... Oh, that's a Corvette. Corvette. That's yeah. a Corvette, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it looks brilliant. looks absolutely fantastic. That does look good. Great, I like massive that. exhaust at the back. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. But... One thing is amazing about it, it's American, it's muscle, but it will do two and a half seconds to 60. Oh, yes, sod. That would be a hell of a machine. Mm. Oh, my God. Top speed, over 220 miles an hour. Thousand really? horsepower, apparently. Really? Okay, apparently fair so. enough. 220 miles an hour in a muscle car. Yeah. That's built by a small independent company. You're going to need company. balls of titanium. Granite. Yeah. You're going to need some big, big... Cajones to drive that. Yeah, it's basically oh what it is. It's basically a Corvette hmm. upgraded with everything. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So it's absolutely everything packed in to make it the best Corvette you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh right, yeah, but it, it is very distinct. You go, that is a Corvette. Yeah. When you look at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it's only going to cost one hundred and thirty thousand hey? dollars. Yeah, but you think about what else is on the range of the market. Well, I suppose yeah, the the normal muscle cars aren't that expensive, but that's a pretty big jump from say a regular Corvette. What are they about eighty grand? Probably about say yeah, something like that. Yeah. I imagine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it coming out. That look, looks very good actually. Like that. You're talking about the Grenadier. We've seen some spy shots of that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Some of it clad in camo. Looks like a Defender, really, doesn't it? It's basically, a Defender. It's basically and a Defender. And if you go onto the Ineos website, mm. <laughs> it says here. Um, on the big page, what it's going to be used for. Yeah. And it's a big picture, basically, for slideshow of kind of Africa and farming. It says, I need a 4x4 four four that can dot, 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 go farming, explore Africa. So what's the first thing you think of when you see a 4x4 four four exploring Africa? A Land Rover. Yeah, that's very true. So basically, it's just a Land Rover. It's just going to be a Land Rover. I know, when you said something that's roaming around in, a 4x4 four four roaming around in Africa, I thought about something with a gun on the back of it, but... Probably that's not all that correct to say. Or PG. No, not really. No, it's not an elephant either. It does look like a Defender. Um, saw some of the auto car images for it. The yeah. sort of the mock-ups they do. I don't think it's going to look quite that that modern. I think it is no, just going to well, look like a Defender. I was doing a bit of totting up on it. And um, it's got a very boxy kind of feel to it. Mm. And the whole thing's built completely for functionality. Yeah. Not for looking good to impress people at the golf club. Fair enough. Or... To drive down the West country. London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> to exactly. Right right, 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 yeah. To drive around West London. Um, oh, of course it will, though. It will be like that. straight in West London. Oh, 100%. Was, the idea came from a pub in West London. Well, exactly, yeah, yeah. It came from the ground. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. And another thing about it, it says in the back, there's a room for a Euro pallet. Can you think of a single user who's going to what's use he, their... What's a Euro pallet? It's a what's pallet. It's the other thing you put things on. It's a big wooden thing. Yes, but what makes it European? The size dimensions. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you've lost me. I really got. Oh, oh. So, so it's, it's okay. A, it's a, it can fit some wood in the back. Yes, it's basically going to be a van. Oh, okay. Oh, Everyone's right, going to get all their vans and they're and going to they're get all ideas. Have, hmm, I'm not entirely sure no. that you're probably right there. But I know, I, I can see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Tell you what, I did see on the grill, Yeah. the grill that it had got, well, this is in the spy shot, so God knows what it's going to actually look like because they're never really quite the same. Um. But it had the grill of a of a Defender, like the SVX ones that oh, they did, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the 60th anniversary job. Oh, I love that car. That's a great looking car, great I looking think. Car. Exactly. And so now to kind of finish off the news, I'm going to gloss over this because it's not really for people who love cars, but I couldn't really ignore it. The new Vauxhall Mocha. Have you mm. seen the new visor? They call it the Vauxhall visor, the grill they're putting on the front of it. Oh, I, oh right, okay. Oh, that's it there, is it? Oh, that's right, it okay. There. That's basically, it's going to be the Mocha Cyclops because it is just one big grill. The new Vauxhall visor. Exactly, it's got a bold, a bold design. 
Not can, really can, can we move on? Yeah, it's eminent right it, there and then. Really yeah, we don't like that very much. I don't like that at all. No. That's anyway. Horrible. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. What have you got for me? What have I got for you? I'm 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 probably going to start an argument here, but why? I have a question. Why are car colours so bloody boring? All I see when I drive well, is... They're not. You go into any car configurator, they're all quite cool names. Names? Name, no, not names. Go on a car... Okay, right, okay, right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this now. Right, here we go. Right, I've got the BMW 520i that yeah. I had a look at earlier. A 520i M Sport Saloon. Okay? Yeah. Nice car. Not got the stupid grill of the no, new no. car or anything like that. No, it's a nice 5 Series. Nothing wrong with that. Doesn't look like Steve Buscemi. No, not at all. 184 horsepower. But the colours, right. Here, here are the colours. So you can have white as standard. Yeah. Non-metallic white. Then you can have a metallic black. £900 extra. Grey, same. 900 all 900 Black sapphire. So, something grey. A sort of a pale blue. What does that say? Phytonic fe- fe- blue. Phytonic blue. Do you know what that what? is? R- nothing. No. Absolutely no rubbish. £900, again. Another grey, another sort of dark browny grey, and then one that I really can't see the difference between that or that. No, but actually I can I can see one big difference. It's £1,005 so more. It's a hundred. It's £1,995. It's two grand extra. I know, but for, you have to have the additional equipment with it. Oh, I'm not That's interested. <laughs> Hang on a minute, but then there's another one there. You can have a red. You can have a dark red if you want. Yeah. Another two grand extra. No. I just can't understand why car colours. So I'm outside. What I've what I came in today? Oh, the F Pace SVR. No, 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 no. I've got the yellow Defender out. Have you? I've got the yellow Defender. That shows how much I haven't actually paid attention to exactly. what car you drive. I've got the yellow North American spec. Oh yeah, the yellow Nas. The soft Land top. Driver. Soft I top love Land Rover. Rover. Great car, left hand drive, lovely yeah. bit of fun. And that comes in a colour called AA yellow. A lovely flat yellow, which just says what it does on the tin. It is not, exactly not called... I, was, I was just saying that in my head right then. It is what it says on the tin. Exactly. It is AA yellow. You go in there and you go to Dulux and it says AA yellow and you yeah. go, that's a bright yellow. Do you know what these people should do? You know, What's you, that? Now you mentioned Dulux, um, you can get an app on your phone and yeah. it's a Dulux app. Where are you going? So bear with me, what you can do is take a picture of the wall and you mm-hmm. decide what colour you want it from the Dulux range. Right. You can already do that. No, you can't. Yes, you can. You can I, I what, so all of that was just endless rambling about the Dulux app? You can always do Good plug for Dulux right there. A lot of people, you can just take in, say, this pen here and say, I want it that blue. Yeah. And they'll do it for you. Really? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Right, okay. But anyway, what were we, what were we doing? We were talking about car, car colours. colours. That was what your favourite topic at the moment. My favourite car- topic at the moment. Why are they so boring? So yeah, that BMW one is stupid. Two thousand pounds for a, a dark red. So it's the trouble is unless it's a new car and they have like a launch colour. Yeah. So the F Pace or some sort of Jaguar came out with a thing called Cesium Blue, a really bright blue, mm. and I it's either like yellow, Very childish sort of way. Exactly. Like but the only reason they do that is because they have to have some interesting colour so it can go on Auto Car magazine or something like that. And oh, it's right, eye catching okay, yeah. for the press photos, which is they just car colours now are just the sort of boring grey recession proof. So that's sort of like your favourite colour then. What Nardo grey? I f- hate Nardo grey. Nardo grey is just one of the most flat, boring colours that has ever appeared on an Audi. It's so dull. Suits the car then. Suits the car. But some of them, are like something like an RS3, saucy little car. Brilliant little car. But it gets painted in this flat. It's the grey equivalent of fag packet green. You know the colour you get on the fag oh, packet. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That green colour. That's the grey equivalent of that. This flat, dead, awful, boring colour. Yeah, but that's meant to put you off smoking, and you smoked what? And that puts days? me off buying an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the only reason you don't buy an Audi though well I, I, I'm not a big Audi fan myself but it's uh, the way that loads of cars everyone yeah. wants that they want an RS6 and they want it in Nardo Grey it's so boring I hate it it's Audi different. do do a really cool colour can you think of like great colours great, great colours. car colours quantum grey what the Aston Martin colour yeah. well that's a grey that's boring I'm thinking 
Well, we've just done a Range Rover Classic. We've done a classic Range Rover two-door yeah. in the original Bahama Gold, and that is gorgeous. Ooh, yeah. Very similar to, I can't remember the name of it, but it wasn't far off that colour, which was Brett Sinclair's car in the in the, the DBS that Brett Sinclair had in, uh, what was it? The Persuaders. Persuaders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then you never see any British racing green anymore. No, you don't. You can get as an optional extra, though, on the Land Rover configurator, yeah, you can which get I spend a... all my time on. But exactly. It's an optional extra, and it'll cost you a stupid amount of money. What happened to nice car colours? It's everything is... It's leased car stone grey, and it's boring. Well, cars are going a bit boring now, anyway. Well, cars are going a bit boring. Look at this. 59% of UK cars yeah. are either grey, black, or white. Fifty. So 59%? Where is, where is that other... Where is the rest of that? What colour is that? Because all I ever see is blade, 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 grey, black and white. Do you know what I do like? Do you remember that um, that VW they did, the Harlequin Golf thing? No. Do you know what I'm talking about? Get a picture up. I'll, pu- I'll pull a picture up for you. It's this this badger here. Look at that. There you go. Harlequin Golf. That's you know what that is? What? That is a Benetton Formula 1 car. Uh, yeah, do you know what it is? It's the same sort of uh, turquoise colour on the side. Every panel a different colour. I just think oh, that's Oh, now you've said it. I can't now get out the fact that the Mercedes Formula 1 car is boring. What, the colour scheme? It's grey. Well, it's a silver arrow, so it you can see grey, that. What other car colours are I think the Williams team colours are boring. Well, the they're not going to be Aquafresh anymore. No, exactly. Aquafresh, yeah, with the red and the white <laughs> and the blue. I see what you're going with that. But anyway, we are deviating there. Yeah, so we're talking about launch colours on cars. Yeah. You say you like the yellow... On the F type, you know the new F type. Yeah, when kind they of did like the it's done kind of orange. That kind of... is called Sorrento Yellow. Oh, okay. I That's... like that because Sorrento is such a gorgeous place. It is a very nice place, but the colour. Do you know how much that is as an option? Ooh. So how much were the BMW ones again? Was it two thousand pounds? Two grand for the basically two thousand pounds. So this is Jaguar, so it's British. So it's obviously going to be more. You think? Yeah. So I'm going to say three grand. Four and a half grand. Four and a half grand. Four and a half grand. That's Same the same with the orange. On my first car. Exactly. Four and a half grand for that option of yellow. Yeah, true. I suppose British... my first car though is. Well, yeah, that's true. Car. British Racing Green, however, is still seven hundred and thirty quid extra. Should be free. It should be free. No, they should. They yeah, should they give should... it to you. They should actually just pay you to have it. On exactly. The car. I would. I that should be a government-funded thing. One thing they did do was a color. They did about a hundred cars or so for the of the previous F type. Yeah. In a colour called Yunnan Yellow for the Chinese market named sounds after like, a province. Um, sounds like Borat saying that. Yunnan Yellow. Yunnan Yellow. It, yeah, it's... Oh, look at that. That is just great. We'll get it up on YouTube for those who yeah, want we'll to see it. Yeah, we'll put it up for you. It's a hateful. terrible quality picture, but you can get an idea of how... It's a terrible quality wild. colour as well, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely awful. But then what you can also do is you can then go completely the other way and ruin a car completely and its entirety. Oh, what, by having an interest, too interesting colour? Exactly, and that's what this footballer, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, supremely and supremely talented footballer, right. really loves his cars. Let me guess. But guess what, guess what he's done? He's wrapped his car chrome. But guess what car oh. it is? What? A LaFerrari. Oh my God, have you he's got a picture? He's chromed up a LaFerrari. There it is. We'll get it up on YouTube as well. Oh God. It's just terrible, isn't it? Is that the standard place that the number plate would go? No, it usually it's, goes on the side, doesn't it? It's mounted halfway up the bonnet on a little air intake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't bejazzle Angelina Jolie, so why would you bejazzle her <laughs> for a Ferrari? <laughs> no, you wouldn't really. Oh, I just it's, hate that. But he's done that as well to a Lamborghini Performante, Huracan Performante as yeah. well. And you just think, why? That's just so typical footballers. They don't, they don't create a good name for themselves in the motoring world. No, I'm they really sick don't. of it. They don't. I can go one worse than you. Go on then. Now, there's an interesting story about Ferrari have started sending cease and desist letters to people who are messing around with oh, their cars. Yeah, yeah. I imagine oh, maybe he got one of them as well. Whatever his Deserves name is. one. With his LaFerrari there. I can go on. Uh, there's a DJ called Dead Dead Mao. He's got a five on the end of it. Dead that. Dead Mao 5. Dead Mao 5. Yeah. I, oh, hang on a minute. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Dead Mao. Dead, dead Mao. Dead yeah. Mouse. That's that what it means. Really okay, sense. carry on. Do you want to see what he did to his, his Ferrari here? I bet you're going to show me. Oh, yeah, I'll check that out. Oh, no. Oh. It, it, it's got pink... It's got pink... It's got pink brake calipers. calipers. What it's got on it is... Even without the rainbow and the cat on the side, it's that got would look dreadful. That sort of is awful. A pixelated cat with a rainbow coming out its ass there. And, yeah, and so Ferrari have been sending letters to people saying, take that off your car. And I think they're entirely just Completely to do that. true. That is terrible. It goes one further. Because he took the badges off the car 
Don't, so, don't, don't say you put that cut on there. No, no, no. You put a, a leaping cat or something on it, but not a not a, uh, not a leaping horse. horse. No, you put a leaping cat on the side, and he called it. He had badging on it. It's calling it the Perari. Perari. No. Oh, honestly, that car is too far gone. You couldn't too far just gone. you couldn't take it off and repaint it. That car is going to be crushed or set yeah. fire to. And I will do it personally on Ferrari's behalf. So Ferrari, if you happen to be listening to our podcast, which I'll be on. more than happy to get, look at the number plate as well. Perari. Perari. On the number plate. It looks like it? a Leaping Puma cat. sticker. Yeah, it does look like a Puma thing as well. I, yeah, yeah, I absolutely hate that. That is just awful, awful thing. I've just realised something as well. What's that? Aside from all that crappy car nonsense that we've just been looking at. What about Ferraris with cats on the side? Of them? Exactly, Ferraris with okay. cats on the side. We've forgotten a key piece of the news. What's that? Tesla. What about... T- oh, they've, Tesla! They've opened up a new factory. No, they're going to open ah. up. They've been looking at sites to open up a new factory in the lovely place that is Somerset. Somerset. It's a very modern place for a very antiquated village. Yeah, absolutely. County, County there. Um, so yeah, they're going to put one of their gigafactories up and they're going to put up a four million square foot site. That's not hard to find in Somerset. It's all just apple fields. It's for, well, you say apple fields. So I imagine they're going to be bringing out a, uh, a range of cider driven cars. Oh, yes. In Somerset. You think about the Wurzels. I, I am a cider drinker. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I am a Tesla driver. I drive it all the day. Oh, electric combine harvesters. That's what we're going to do. That's what it'll be. It'll be electric. I got a brand new electric combine harvester. I got a Tesla combine harvester. And I'll give you I the key. I that accent so badly. Oh, you have badly there. Yeah, so the Department for International Trade have been helping them find somewhere to put it. So watch out, Somerset. Elon Musk is coming. Well, I'm glad we got that last little bit in because that's quite interesting. To have a massive factory slap bang in the middle of, I don't know, the Exmoor Moors or something like that, I'd exactly. imagine. Yeah, so there we go. We've sort of covered the news, had a rant about car colours, and now we can move on to, once again, do it again this episode, Drive By Destroy. Cue the crappy intro. Oh yes, I love our new sting. Right, here's the sting. That's brilliant. Isn't it? I think that's just monumentally Crap. amateur. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, that's Love exactly it anyway. what we are. We are nothing if not monumentally amateur. Right, okay. Your drive by destroy for this week. Luxury SUVs. Mm. What are we thinking? What so, are we thinking? You've chosen them for this. I've chosen. The Bentley Bentayga. Yep. Rolls Royce Cullinan. Yep. And the Range Rover Autobiography SVA, the special vehicle autobiography job, which I was driving only yesterday. Nice car. Except it was had a stupid blue colour on it, but I'm not getting back into colours again. And, I'm sorry, I'm ranting that, but around the start-stop button... Oh, yes, I remember you telling me all about this now. It's all crystals. Oh. All crystals around the edge of the thing. And uh, same on the other side as well, where the uh, glove box release is. It's all over. So if you took that off, put British it in British Racing Green, I'd have one. But other than that, I wouldn't bother. Anyway, let's get straight into Drive By Destroy. Yeah, I was going first. You were going so, first. Drive, Bentayga, mm. just because it's the fastest. Yep. Then I would buy the SVA. Hang on, how fast is this Bentayga then? Uh, it's the fastest SUV in the world and it goes 187 miles an hour. The standard car? No, the Speed V8. Oh, Big, right, okay. Souped up Bentayga with everything going on. They replaced the uh, wooden dashboard with um, carbon fibre. Oh, of course they have. Your sort of thing, that is, oh, that's it? a bit of shit. So that, I'm assuming that wouldn't be the standard pro, what's that, they cost 135, 133,000? Like yeah, so it's a bit more. So it'll oh, obviously be a bit more. Um, what, what did you say, it was the quickest? Quickest SUV in the world. What, Three and a it? half seconds, not to 60, 187 miles an hour. Well, to be fair, that SVR F-Pace is 3.7, so it's not it's massively not too off that. Off then, is it? But they're all, when you get to that sort of speed, it's all sort of negligible. Sort exactly, of. and that SVR is also half the price. Well, that's very true. Anyway, so yeah. you're you're driving the Bentayga. Driving the Bentayga. The angry one. Buying the SVA. Right. Just because I know that we both love mm. Range Rovers. Mm. When you think of a luxury off-roader, you, you automatically think of, think of a Range Rover. Being in the SVA, I think it's beautiful inside. Mm. Very comfortable, makes you feel special. It is. That's what I'd buy. Okay. And then destroy is the Cullinan. I wouldn't want um, to destroy the inside of it. Um, it is uh, the most expensive would you, there. Would you, I've got, I'm going to jump A quarter of a million pounds. I'm going to jump, jump in. Then. It can completely I me. think, I think, sorry, I've put you off your stride here, but you say you want to, 
I, I, I have no words. I could go on and describe that, but look at that. That is the uh, Mansori. Oh, put color. that on the YouTube. Oh yeah, that will be out there. You'll be seeing this if you're right, well, on the YouTube. Ignore that. I went on the website and looked at the um, interior they show you there, and it yeah. looked pristine. It was like Buckingham Palace in a car. It was lovely. This is. But the only problem hmm. with going inside that car is you start on the outside. And you have to look at it. And you have and to look at it. Yeah, I get you. I get you. And I don't want to feel like Floyd Mayweather everywhere <laughs> I go. Well, I think so you probably would. So for that very, very reason, I would want to destroy the colour then. Looking at this Mansori that thing, it's got a awful. it's two-tone grey and blue matte. I wonder how much those colours cost. With a turquoise interior. Well, this is getting on to colour again. That's some way of the way. Nice blue, apart from the fact that it's matte. And then you get into the interior and it just looks vile. That is pure toxic waste. It Remember just... those sweets you used to get? Toxic waste. Tower sweets. Oh, yeah. That oh, would be a flavour. Yeah. The Montessori interior flavour. Oh, that is just awful. Yeah, for that good reason, I'm destroying that car. And it's the most expensive. Well, I'd quite... I'm going the other way. I would drive the Cullinan. Really? Primarily because I would quite like to drive that Mansori thing. Just I'm unfortunately going to have to walk to it, get in it, look at that interior. But I'd quite like to drive it, preferably into a brick wall. But apart from that, I would quite like to, to drive it. Yeah. The regular car. Because it's supposed to be all right to drive. But then again, so is the Bentayga. But I just think the Bentayga from the outside is so lacklustre and, and ugly. And they can't sell them. And they're just horrible. No, I, I agree that the Bentayga isn't a great looking car. So I'll be I'll be driving the Cullinan. Uh, what do you say? It was a quarter of a million pounds. It is, yeah. Absolutely vile in Mansori one. Which I imagine is a lot of money for such a horrendous interior. Mm. That's perfect for Dubai. That's it is, Dubai absolutely, car. absolutely. Is it car. is awful, it is awful. But I'll be buying, like you, the SVA Range Rover in a decent colour, decent Because we interior. are sensible people. Sensible people, it's the go-to one. And then I will be destroying the Bentayga. It's just horrible. Just blow it up, it's horrible. So awful is that picture. More, less reluctant than destroying the LaFerrari like you did last week? Oh, yeah. oh God, no. I'd destroy that in a heartbeat. Really? I'd have a lot of difficulty destroying the LaFerrari, but I would be blowing that up. Or driving it into a swimming pool. I'd quite like to do that. That's more a Rolls-Royce thing to do. That's the rock star Rolls-Royce thing to do. But yeah. chuck a Bentley in a pool? Yeah, Why probably not? about the same. That's about right. I agree. And that kind of then brings us off to the end of Drive By Destroy. And let us know your thoughts on when we post this. Um, oh, absolutely. If you think we're completely wrong, let us know because we would like to argue with you. And we'll post that up on the Drive By podcast Instagram page. Excellent plug there. So yeah, drop us a comment there. Let us know what you'd do or if we're completely wrong. So then, following the successful opinionated Drive By Destroy, we're going to finish off this week with a brand new feature. A brand new feature. We call this section Pulling Power. This is a section of the podcast where we will tell you about the weight that cars can pull so you can tell whether your carrot van will be compatible with that car. Really? No, not really. Now, this is where we will be talking about a car's ability to pull a potential lover. So, we will go up in a scale of one to four. One being rejected, the door doesn't open, they're not coming out. Two, they come out, they reevaluate their options and they're going with, let's just be friends. Three, buy me a drink. So, they're sort of the impressed. Door. Yeah. Yep, sort of impressed. They're, you're in the door, so now it's up to you. The car has done its work. And four, is positively weak at the knees. The car has done all the work for you right there. It's gone above and beyond the call of duty. Absolutely, right. So you've got a little list of cars there and we shall rank them. I have chosen five cars to start off with this week. Number one being the Nissan Micra. What a car. What a car. But I wanted to say rejected immediately there. That is the first thing you think of, isn't it, really? Exactly, but I think there might be quite an honest person. So I probably... I'd say just be friends. I think, yeah, you're looking at more of a friendly person coming round in the little meep meep Nissan no, Micro. They I don't think exactly that. knock your socks off, do they, as soon as you see them? No, exactly. Unless it's got flames down the side of it. So it's rejected straight away. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, what else have you got? Number two. Yeah. Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. Rejected. Straight away. Yeah. Immediately. This Go person on. has got the ego the size of an aircraft carrier. Yep, absolutely. And the personality of... Caravan. A caravan. No, not yeah. very good at all. Their dinner talk is going to be dreadful. They just talk about themselves the whole time. They're going to have a massive, really gaudy watch. I was just thinking Huge. exactly the same thing. A big gold Rolex. Yep, absolutely. And the, you know the really skinny jeans? No socks. White, ripped, skinny jeans. That's it, yep. And, and, and shoes that have studs. 
You know which ones I mean, don't you? Like the, is it Gucci, the shoes that have studs well, Oh, out? what, like little spiky things yeah. out the top? Totally. No, no, no. That I is think the person yeah. drives that car. Yeah, absolutely. So we're not doing the F12 burn letter. I don't mind the F12, to be fair, as Beautiful a car. car but not for pulling. Car. No, not really. It, it just says, I've got no personality. Like you say, I'm making up for my lack of personality yeah. with a big red V12. Exactly. Exactly. Number three. Number three. BMW 5 Series. Uh, not the M version, just the normal 5 Series. I don't think you're, you're weak at the knees with that. I think you're probably no. getting a drink. I think you're just about getting a drink. You're sensible. You've got your finances in order. Yeah, that is exactly the perfect got, way to absolutely. describe that car. You've, you've got, got your, your finances in order. Yeah, absolutely. You're not hiding any big debts or anything apart from what you spent on the car. Exactly. Um, See, so yeah, I think you're probably all right there. Exactly. But, but you're not going to be weak at the knees because the person knows that you spend your entire time up the other arse of another car. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so that's they, a big turn off. Tentatively, you can buy me a drink and, and let's hear what you've got to say. Exactly. I'm not exactly. a five series fan myself. No one is. No. Nah. Top <laughs> of the police. <laughs> Fair enough. And the last one? Number four is the Land Rover Defender 90. Weak at the knees. Weak at the knees. Well, I would straight be. Away. I would be. I would be. Turns I asked my Land girlfriend, what would, you, what would you be if you uh, saw me pull up in a Land Rover Defender 90? Weak at the knees. And I've just put an order in. Oh, okay. You just yeah. put, you've gone for two. Makes up for a lot of things about me. You're going to have someone <laughs> on the side as well. Exactly. Oh, dear. Okay, yeah. So, no, I'd say with the Defender, yep, yeah, you're doing all right there. But by the time, if it's an old Defender, by the time you've come out the, the bar, the restaurant, yeah. it's going to be a nicked. Or broken down, you're going to get it started. Broken down, or you've had the doors nicked. Doors nicked. Panels nicked. Panels nicked. And then they realise they've got to walk home with you, or they'll get an Uber. Get and the Prius. Price. Yeah. The price is going to come up, and it will sweep you away. Is it Prius or Prius for you? Oh, I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, that's not even rejected. No, that's that is not. straight to the scrapyard. No, they just go, I didn't know I was getting an Uber, Ooh. I thought they were picking me up. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, say, exactly. I say Prius. Is it the Americans say Prius? Prius. I say Prius. Oh, do you? I don't know why. Prius just seems like the natural thing to say. Yeah. It's I'm a car not, I don't really care much it's about. It's a car, anyway. no, exactly. And then what's know. the last one? I get it's going to be a Ferrari Dino. No, completely different, actually. Oh. Renault Espace. Oh, I'd like to have been a Dino. Well, that's a shame. That can be next week. Okay, we'll do next week. We'll do a Dino next week. But yeah, Renault Espace. <laughs> I think it can go two ways, you know. Right. I think immediately rejected. Because this person has obviously got lots of kids, lots of baggage, and they just say no straight away, get out of there. Or they'll say, buy me a drink, because they think this person will want children. I have a family with this person. No, you're not a Plus, fast. they've got their finances on order. <laughs> they've definitely got their finances in order. Not as well as the, M the BMW not. 5 Series, because they can only afford an Espace. Toner distribution is going very well. Very well. For that man in the BMW. Yeah. I agree. Which Renault Espace are you talking about? Are you talking about an old one or the rather new, the funky one? There's a new one? Yeah, well, there's the, the newish one. Oh, it's God. rather, it's rather oh, funky. I don't, really... I, don't think, I don't think it's a bad looking car. You are Let joking. pull up a picture of it. The Renault Espace. Renault Espace. All it's, the good old for, all it's good for is storage solutions. I've been in one for a taxi taking me to the airport. Loads of space for my bags because it comes with so much baggage. <laughs> and overhead, you have things above you. You can press above you. Loads of storage. <laughs> In the side right. of the doors, loads of, storage. loads of storage. I don't think that's a bad looking car. Oh, Charles. Really? Okay, right, hang on. Slight anomaly here. Yeah. Okay, right. This pulls out. Right. Pulls up what outside you your car. Is outside gonna... your car? Outside your house. Is this going to go on YouTube as well? No. Yes, it will, but I think you should know what you're looking at there. Renault is fast F1 with the wow. wing on the back. That oh. pulls up. That comes up. That either, as well, that could go two ways because if it's a bloke, that's immediately rejected because look at that spoiler. That is a look huge, at that, that spoiler. Is a ridiculous spoiler. But woman in that, brilliant. She knows her cars. Oh, absolutely. I she think the Renault Espace F1 is a great looking car. But then again, you do see a lot of Vauxhall Zafiras and things with body kits on it, which don't have the same effect. No. If you see an old Vauxhall Zafira with like a big set of rims on it and a uh, like a chin spoiler on, you know, the they're just coming back up from their way from anti-protesting protests. Anti-protesting protests. Yeah, that's oh, the right, sort of person okay. that drives that car. Well, oh look, they've done another one. Sorry, I've, I'm oh, just. Well, he's on... getting distracted now from look the Look at that. That, come on, tell me that one, that rendering of. That's just an F1 rendering on a Renault Espace. Yes, I know, but it's got like big fins and I, I, I like that. Oh, that you looks don't really like good. That. It's black and yellow and it's got all the proper. Uh, That's what someone who thinks a cool it. mum drives. A cool mum drives that? No! That is, or Daniel Ricardo drives that. Daniel Ricardo's mum drives that. Daniel Ricardo will drive that when he's got lots of very, very smiley kids. He's got 
kids with enormous <laughs> brims on them. And they're all, do you want some more orange juice? Yes, oh, Daddy, I want to drink it out of my shoe. <laughs> You're complete I'm sorry, tossy, I right? like that. I think that's brilliant. Right, anyway, I think that's a good place to end pulling power. Yeah, do you know what? I think, I think we're rambling too much. I think we're rambling away from on. It. I'm getting into Daniel Ricardo's non-existent children. Not getting into Daniel Ricardo's <laughs> non-existent children. I'm covering... No, no you're not. I'm not. Doing that either. Either. I'm not. I think we should end. I Always think we should. Uh, thank, you very, <laughs> thank you very much for listening to the Drive-By podcast. Tune in again next week Wait. for episode three. Check us out on Instagram at Drive By Podcast. Check out me at Charlie Drives. I've got lots of new stuff going up on there. Yeah, and, and if you haven't done already, be sure to check out his excellent, sorry, I never pay you compliments, oh. but be sure to check out his excellent review of the new Defender because I genuinely was really impressed by oh, it. Oh, thank it was you really, very much. Really good. Just a little thing I did uh, on the Instagram, just a little 350 word jobby, but I will be driving that off road soon and I'm looking forward to that very much. And I imagine I will see you again and I will be able to talk about that and I'll be incredibly jealous I will turn green I think you probably will but there we go it's an excellent excellent car I'm very much looking forward to driving that but thank you for tuning in thank you for tuning in we've had a bit of fun we have see you next week see you next week bye bye